A Pennsylvania man spent more than 30 years agonizing over who murdered his sister, Janet Walsh. In their tiny town near Pittsburgh, it wasn't hard to finding suspects, but police couldn't make any arrests. Well, tomorrow night, 48 Hours looks at how determined prosecutors and the original cop on the case finally unraveled the mystery. Here's a preview of Peter Van Sant's report. I drove up to the front of the house and ran up to the door, and Pete Keltori, Janet's father, told me that she was in the back bedroom. It's 1979 in Manaka, Pennsylvania, and rookie cop Andy Gall was about to walk into his first homicide. I walk in and I pull the sheet back slightly. There was no need to even check for a pulse because you could tell by the, her face and the scarf around her neck that she was dead. The word dead just didn't apply. She's, she's my sister. There's nothing that could make my sister be dead. Francesco Caltieri was 20 years old. I had to go in and see for myself, but my, my brother would not allow me to. He put me in a bear hug and he would not let go. His sister Janet was getting a fresh start in life after recently separating from her husband and moving into her own place. Janet had gone out with friends, but the next day when she didn't show up for work, her family went to check on her. She was found tied up and strangled in her bed. Investigators soon had a list of suspects. I have a plot from an old TV show like Murder, She Goat, where we have five suspects and I can't put a finger on any of them. No one was arrested. The case turned ice cold. Three decades passed. In the late 2000s, a cold case unit decided to re-examine Janet's case. Cops rounded up the original suspects, from a drifter who danced with Janet the night of her death. I didn't kill anyone. To Janet's soon-to-be ex-husband. Scott, did you murder Janet? I did not. Assistant District Attorney Brittany Smith would end up getting assigned to Janet's case. In a way, this is a, a time capsule. We're going back to the late 1970s. We're going to the death scene now. Yes. Using enhanced DNA technology, this cold case turns white hot. They find DNA on Janet's sheets, nightgown, and bathrobe tie used to bind her hands. It's a bombshell. The DNA belonged to one of the original suspects who we can now call a killer. Wow, Peter Van Sant is with us. So amazing that the DNA was able to provide such clues so many years later. That was the enhancement of the DNA technology, but there's even a dispute within that in this side, this case, because there were several samples that they weren't able to uh, take. It's very expensive to get DNA. And the samples that came back, one included an unidentified male. Mm -hmm. it does sound like a Murder, She Wrote episode in some ways. Was there one suspect who was always at the top of the list? Well, eight out of ten <laughs> times, if a wife dies, the husband did it. And so the soon-to-be ex-husband, who had a reputation of following her around town, he was at the top of the list. But there was also a local drifter in town whose checkbook was found about a block away from the murder scene who failed two lie detector tests. Mm -hmm. And I grill this guy during the course of the Hour. Wow. It's amazing. Eight out of ten times when a woman is killed, it's her husband. It's her husband. And homicide investigators know that and they are so dogged. I don't care if you were on live TV yes. on the other side of town when they think the murder took place, you're the guy they're going to spend all of their energy on. Wow. wow. Looking forward to it. Peter, thank you so much. Good thank to see you. you. And you can watch Peter's full report, Janet's Secret. That's tomorrow night on 48 Hours. That's at 10, 9 Central, right here on CBS.